Hello everyone and welcome to day 416 in my M140i. In this video I'm going to be taking a quick look back at my November Goodwood track day and now that I've done a good few road miles on them and a wet track day I'm going to share some more thoughts on these Kumo Extra PS91 tyres. So firstly the wet track day at Goodwood in November. Yeah it was very wet, very greasy, very slippery and very slow. Certainly wasn't the most exciting track day to watch but I did learn a huge amount about driving the M140 and also about these tyres. Now I'm not going to bore you with my two remaining sessions in full. As I said neither was desperately exciting. Session 3 was driven entirely in comfort mode and session 4 with the tyre pressures finally reset was driven in Sport Plus. And with the safety nets in place from those two modes I did start to get on it a bit more. I should have done that from the start really instead of going DSC fully off from session one that probably wasn't the best idea with new tyres on a slippery circuit but yeah I did get on it a bit more and I even managed to get a bit of slip and slide here and there and my verdict on Kumo's Exeter PS91 so far well here's a short montage of the last two sessions of the day and then we'll come back and I'll tell you exactly what I think of them. DSC has just cancelled. Okay, so it looks like I'm stuck with all systems on and soft suspension. So let's see at what point the traction control kicks in. Yeah, there you go. You feel it? Yeah. So it doesn't it wouldn't have taken much to get the back of the car moving. Ooh, yeah, okay, so I would have had to correct that. Yeah. Take much there. No, it doesn't look it. Feel it, just edging. Oh. And that's what it was. A bit more drop, isn't it? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, and he went a bit deep there, didn't oh, he? Bust yeah. to the apex, please. Last session of the day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see that? <laughs> it's a very fine line. Oh, that was a good fun though. Oh, no, yeah, for you. <laughs> now that is cool. Yeah. So we're still resetting the tyre pressures. Yeah. It's down at 71%. Yeah, it's not bad. Even there, I could quite happily go a bit later. Um, yeah, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Another lap. Cool. <laughs> yeah, it, it cracked it quite suddenly. You yeah. feel that then? Yeah, that yeah. wasn't me suddenly, you know, stopping it. So we've nice. got pressures now. Can you read them out to me? Uh, the 34 uh, near side front, 33 offside front, 37 near side rear, 35 offside rear. Okay, so I've got them where they should be. And the fronts are about 40. One degrees and the rears are 34 and 31. Okay. So they're good. I thought you said you weren't work, working the brakes. Well, <laughs> I, I don't really feel like I am. Do you know what? I think in future, if I do a wet track day, I'm, I'm not going to turn BSC off. No. I'm actually starting to enjoy this now. I wasn't because I'm so kind of apprehensive. Yeah. I must say, I kind of secretly wanted to hate these tyres, but I'm quite impressed. I didn't want to hate them because I felt them in Reg's car. I think they're... Yeah, considering they're what they're dealing with today. Yeah. As I was saying to John in, um, in the pits earlier on, can you get better tyres? Of course you can. Yeah, but for the can money. Can you get better tyres for less than £400 a set? I seriously say. doubt it. So... There you have it, these tyres. What do I think? In short, I think they're absolutely fantastic. Considering how much they appeared to struggle at Goodwood, why would I think that? 
firstly, how they performed at Goodwood, I don't think, was a real fair measure of their performance. They'd barely done a hundred road miles beforehand, so arguably weren't yet giving their best. And secondly, watching them perform on track at Goodwood in isolation tells us absolutely nothing. The conditions were atrocious. It was more slippery than I have ever, ever known it there. And many of the other drivers there said exactly the same thing. I think if I was there on the Michelin PS4s that I had before these tyres, I'd have struggled just as I did. The conditions were that bad. What these Kumo tyres did do though, was communicate exceptionally well, very, very clearly, just how much grip they had. In sessions one and two, I was trying to keep it really tidy, trying to be really smooth, and drive just up to the edge of the grip that I felt they had. In sessions three and four, with the safety nets in place, as I said, I tried to push them just beyond that level of grip and see where the actual limit was. And what I found was that the limit was exactly where I felt it was in sessions one and two. Let's be clear here, on the road, in damp conditions like we've got out here today, they've got nowhere near as much wet grip as the PS4s had. But the feedback you get from them is very clear and you know exactly where you are and exactly what you have left from them. In the dry though, I think they're every bit as good as the Michelin PS4s, genuinely. Of course, we'll need to get back to Goodwood in the dry to really get a, a, a proper comparison and see, see how they stack up. That won't be until the new year now. I've got to wait for Goodwood to publish their circuit diary and then I'm going to get a day or two booked. I'm also hoping to get to Bedford at some point this spring. When that happens, that's going to be a very good day. True open pit lane, some BMW owning friends and several M140i's to rag about in. Now if you have any thoughts or comments on these Kumo PS91 tyres, please do share in the comments below. I'm always interested to hear others' opinions, experiences and thoughts. And lastly, one final point. Thanks to a friend's insistence, I've discovered the absolute joy of a gentle but persuasive clutch kick. Childish, yes, juvenile, most definitely, but so much fun. I'll have more on that in another video. Until then, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, it's much appreciated, and I'll see you all in my next video. Thank you very, very much for watching.